Hey, it's Elizabeth here, and I am back for a ramble session number two. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it just wouldn't be a video unless Fred said hello. Um, so anyhow, what I wanted to come on and ramble about today is a question that I had on the Fobonichi group. And I will attempt to, well, tell you the question and work on this at the same time and answer the question. So the question was, um, well, what I tend to do on, on the site, which I'm hoping that I'm not going to do that anymore, but when I post my pages, I tend to do a pick overload. So I will post like, you know, four to six pictures of my pages at a time. Now, somebody asked the question, you know, because obviously it was like a pick overload. So they're like, wow, you know, um, what do you do? Like, do you do all your pages in, in one day and then post them? Like, you know, I guess asking, um, you know, like why so many pictures at one time possibly, <laughs> but, um, I guess the question was really like, you know, like how do I do my pages and, um, not like a process type thing though, but more like, are you doing these pages all in one day? You know, like four to six pages all in one day and then posting them to the site. And so I shall answer that now. Um, this is what I do. Okay. And I'll show you right now. I have told you before, sorry, my puppies are playing. If you can hear them in the background, I have, uh, when I, I don't even know how to explain this. When I do my pages, okay, I do not work on them every single day. Okay. So here we are on Thursday. If you'll notice, I'm working on last week's pages. Okay. I don't work in this book every day, although I have daily entries. So I work on my book when I can. I've said that before. I do what I can when I can. And I work on several pages um, at different times, you know. So when I have the time or when I'm feeling well enough, when my hands are working and my eyes are working and they're working in conjunction with one another and the planets align and all that good stuff, I get some work done in here. But I have multiple pages in varying stages of completion, okay? So on like, let's take this page for instance, December 9th, okay? So you can see it. I'm really sorry for the angle. I, I just, I don't have one of those, you know, fancy schmancy, um, you know, setups where the camera's above me and you can see, you know, downward. I just don't have that. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. It just, it is what it is. So, and I'm filming on my husband's iPad. So this is the way it's got to be. Um, so anyhow, on this page on December 9th, okay, you can see it still is not complete, obviously. So this page probably I've worked on at least on six different days, okay? So like one day I did this point, uh, poinsettia that was a drawing challenge, I think. And so I worked on that one day and that's all I felt like doing. So I did it, I painted it. And I left it. And then I came back and maybe, uh, you know, I put this tipping in because um, my daughter had come home and told me that one of her professors had nominated her for a National Honor Society scholarship. So I was thrilled about that. So I wanted to tip that in. So that went in. And then maybe I left the page. And then I came back and that particular day was very busy. If you can see my little emoji there, he's like, ah but I did put a sand hat on them because I wanted to stay in keeping with the holiday season and all. And so, yeah, so I was feeling the pressure that day. I was doing so many different things and pulled in so many different directions. And so I found the clip art and stuck it in there and then probably left the page again. Then it was Wednesday. So the whimsical Wednesday was my Fobonichi routine. 
And <laughs> I wrote here, my typical routine is no routine. Yeah, because like I said, I work on these pages when I get the feeling or when I want to or when I have the time or when something strikes my fancy or whatever. So um, I, I just do different things every day on different pages. I, I don't know. Um, there are a lot of times, though, that I do put sticky notes in or whatever just to remind myself of what happened that day. So on this particular page, I have to go back and fill in, you know, with my flair, fill in my writing and then decide if I want to do a background color. So I'll go ahead and do that and color in my headers and all that. So then on this day here on the 10th, I was, I've been into this kawaii kick, this drawing kawaii style kick, and I found the cutest um, YouTube channel. It's called, what is the channel called? Fun to Draw. F-U-N, number two, D-R-A-W. Fun to Draw. And it's by May Yu. And she does the cutest tutorials on kawaii little, um, you know, pictures. And they're so super easy. I am not a drawer. I've said it before numerous times. I do not care to draw. So I usually don't draw. But these are super easy to follow. So I can handle those. So see, on this day, on the 10th, um, I don't, I'm not really sure what was going on on the 10th. Maybe that was the drawing prompt, I think. Yeah, Cookies was the drawing prompt by uh, Art by Yukari. And so I drew the Christmas tree because those were the cookies that um, came to my mind, the spritz cookies my mom used to make. And then here I just stuck in, I had been working on my newsletters to send out. So I'd stuck in the, the you know, what are these called? The stamps, you know, the little thing that comes on the book of stamps. And so these are all the books that I used to post my newsletters out. And then this is the five on Friday. I'm not going to do a flip through. I just want to show you how I have several pages going at the same time, simultaneously. So on Saturday, I had spent a large portion of the day. We were, we were down south and we weren't feeling all that great. So I spent a large part of the day coloring this picture in that I found on Miss Danny B's Pinterest board. And then I just, you know, wrote out in pencil what happened that day. And then we get on to Sunday and this is the lettering prompt. So actually I worked on this and this this morning because I had to take my son into town for his last final exam. So while I was waiting for him in the car because I knew it wasn't going to take him that long, I thought, well, let me just take along my book and I'll do some stuff in it. So yeah, I just decided to write out the lettering prompt and then I think Yukari's art prompt was like a tradition and one of our traditions on Christmas morning is to always read about the birth of Jesus from the book of Luke I believe um, every morning before we open presents. So I did happen to draw in my book today this morning while I was waiting. And then over here, I worked on some things. The page isn't done, but I worked on some of the, the. it was the lettering prompt, and then I worked on some writing. And then on this page, I um, the prompt was, the drawing prompt by Yukari was a snowflake. So I went back on Fun to Draw, and I drew a little kawaii, uh, you know, snowflake. So... And then, as you can see, Wednesday I haven't done anything. And, of course, obviously today I haven't done anything for today. So, in answer to the question, that's why I end up doing a pick overload. Because I rarely get a page finished on the actual day. And um, I have multiple pages going at one time. So, let's see here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six seven pages going at one time. So once like once I finish these two pages, I'll post these two pages. And what I mean by finishing them up is of course um finishing with my flare pen, the writing in and then the coloring of the background. Over here I have to do the same thing. I need to fill in my handwriting 
And then um, if I want to do some designs or stickers or something like that and then color in the background, then I'll do that. And then I'll post these pages, you know. Then I'll work on the rest of these pages, fill this in, um, you know, with my flare pen and then do my coloring of the background. And, you know, sometimes as well, like I might work on this page. Let's say I don't feel like doing that one right then. Maybe I feel like doing this one. So I'll work on this page and then I'll just post those two pages. So I hope that answered your question um, and gave you a little insight into how I do my book. I, like I said, I don't do it every day. I do it when the mood strikes me. I do it when I feel like it or when I'm feeling well enough to. And so, yep, that's how the magic happens. And so, anywho, yeah, I had to take my son this morning to go to class. And he, was on, he wasn't there for very long, but goodness gracious, I had to wake up. This is for you, Allie, at the butt crack of dawn. You heard me right. I had to get up early so I could take him into class um, luckily the college is only like, I don't even know. It's like, it's only like 15 minutes, 15 minutes away, maybe 20, maybe 20 minutes away. It all depends on the traffic. And what I mean by traffic is getting stuck behind a tractor. That is what is considered traffic out where I live, <laughs> getting stuck behind a tractor. And right now, is uh, we are into our planting season and we have already started our harvest season. So there you have it. Uh, God forbid you get stuck behind a tractor. Oh, and the, there's like one road into town. I mean, of course there are like side streets or whatever, but not all of them connect because I live in a farming community. <laughs> oh, yeah. So yeah, they just did a whole bunch of road construction work and um, because there had been, you know, there have been many unfortunate fatal accidents on that one road because people get impatient and it's only a two lane, uh, you know, road. And it is a major road out where I am. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's Fred. Um, but yeah, so they went down the road and they put up these like sticks, you know, I guess they're bendable, but uh, they put those up so that people couldn't pass and they put up these like um, signs that show you how fast you're going, your, the speed that you're going with along with the speed limit and they flash, you know, because people go flying up and down that road. So anyhow, yeah. So you can't pass anymore, which is a good thing. You should never be in a hurry when you're in the car. That just makes for a bad accident and a, and a tragic outcome. So yeah. So we went in and did that this morning and then when we got home, I had to go to the bank, which is, you know, just down the street. So I told my son, I said, let's hop into your car because he hasn't been driving it lately because it's been raining and the windshield wipers don't work. And that car is just the bane of my existence. I can tell you that right now. I'm fixing to give it away. <sighs> so we get home, we get into his car and wouldn't you know it, it didn't start. So we had to get back into my car and go down to the bank. And then the funniest thing, you know, it's like only here where I live. I had to go over and pick something up at the gas station. That's right there by the bank. And down here where I live, I live in a very multicultural area and there are a lot of, of Latin people and of varying, you know, nationalities, you know, I mean, we've got Cubans, we have, um, Puerto Ricans, we have, um, oh, South Americans, you know, Spaniards, I mean, everything, 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 but we have a lot of like Cuban restaurants, a lot of Cuban restaurants. And one of the things down here that's like so typical, I don't know if it is typical where y'all live, but you can go to the gas station <laughs> and on the side of the gas station, there is um, a cafeteria, like a cafeteria, you know how you say it in Spanish. And so inside they have, you know, yuca, which is like, um, 
it's a tuber. It's, it's almost like a potato, you know, but it tastes very different than a potato. And anyway, they, they cook it and simmer it in garlic sauce and uh, I don't know what all, but it is so good and they have onions with it. Oh my gosh, is it ever delicious. And then they also serve, um, oh, they serve a lot of things, a lot of Cuban foods, fresh baked Cuban bread rolls, um, pork, Cubano style, you know, Cuban pork, and it's just so good. So here we were, it wasn't, I don't even think it was 10 in the morning. And we pulled up to the gas station and, you know, my son said something about, um, or no, I asked him, I said, would you, you know, do you want to go in and, and get something? And, or no, 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 he actually, he mentioned it. He was like, you know, we really need to come down here and, and get some Cuban food sometime. I said, well, we can get it right now. I, you know, cause I looked over in the car next to us and there was a guy eating rice and pork in his car. So he's like, but mom, it's only 10 o'clock. I haven't even eaten breakfast. I'm like, who cares? You know? So yeah. So we get out and we go in and, and he had gotten his, uh, his Cuban pork and his yuca, which is so good, yummy. And I just had a few bites of it, but it's, oh my gosh, only here can you like go to the gas station and get, you know, delicious food. <laughs> And it's relatively, I mean, it's inexpensive. Like, the, the he got a, a big thing of pork and a big thing of yuca. And I think the whole thing was like $7. I mean, you can hardly even go to McDonald's and get a meal for $7. And this thing, literally, it's enough to feed three people. So, yeah, it was really, really good. And we should go down there to get some. I mean, and I think, like, my husband used to go down there and get meals for us. And he would get, like, maybe two meals. You know, and it, ha it would have, like, pork and um, rice, you know, rice and beans and, and yuca. And um, he would get, like, two meals and it would be enough to feed us and all four of us and have leftovers afterwards. So, yeah, it was really good. So anyway, enough about my weird breakfast endeavor. <laughs> ah. So, what's been going on with you guys? I hope you all are doing well. And um, I hope my explanation of how I do this book, like, was understandable. Because you know how I can repeat myself. Oh, this is another thing that I wanted to show you. This, this was so cute. This came, it was like a dye tech or something. I don't even know what that is, but some some advertisement in the mail. And I think on Wednesday, Whimsical Wednesday was Lynn's um, prompt about, I think it was again about, not again from her, but we seem to be doing like a lot of tradition things. But anyway... And so I think it was on what is one of your traditions. And one of our traditions every year at Christmas time is Christmas Eve. We, um, well, I'll tell you about that in a second. But anyway, what I found here, we go out and go Christmas lighting. So we go to a neighborhood that's, you know, not very close to here. But we go to a neighborhood and we drive around and look at all the, um, all the Christmas lights. And so this picture was on the advertisement that I had gotten in the mail. And I thought, oh, how cute. I'll just draw in my own lights, you know? So that's what I'm going to work on for, for Wednesday's page um, when I get, whenever I get to it. But um, what was I saying about that? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, on Christmas Eve, one of our traditions is that we make what I like to call um, like baby shower food. Right. So we make like little pigs in a blanket and we make spinach dip, you know, that that spinach dip, I guess that's what it's called spinach dip and onion dip. And what else? Um, little like mozzarella stick. It's like everything totally fattening and so bad for you. That's what we make on Christmas Eve. We have a picnic in front of the TV with all of our snacky foods and right there by the Christmas tree, and we watch a Christmas movie. And then after that, we pile into the car, and we go Christmas lighting. And so we drive around, you know, 
and um, and look at all the pretty Christmas lights. And it's so fun. When the kids were younger, I mean, we've been doing it, you know, forever. And when the kids were younger, it was so cute because we would put them in their pajamas. You know, we'd all get into our pajamas, pile into the car, and I would make a big um, you know, a big bowl of popcorn and the kids, I would make the kids, uh, hot cocoa and they would have it in their, you know, no spill cups or whatever. And we'd set off on our way, you know, and we'd go and, um, look at all the Christmas lights and eat popcorn and drink our cocoa. And we still do it. I mean, my kids are 17 and 19 and my son who's 17 he came up to me, or my husband, one of, I don't know, I was standing there, and he came up to my husband, I guess, and he said, um, are we going Christmas lighting this year? And my husband's like, yeah, why wouldn't we? We go every year. So, yeah. So, we're looking forward to that, and um, we are going to, we're not going to spend Christmas down south. We, do, we never do because, um, you know, we don't get a Christmas tree down there. We don't decorate the house down there for Christmas at all. Uh, and we are going down there, but then we're going to come back up here for, um, actually, I don't know. We'll come back up here like sometime next week. I think, I think we're leaving on Friday to go, to go down South to spend a few days to kind of relax. My husband finally got off his overtime. Oh my heavens to Betsy. He was working like he was going on like 50 days, I think, 50 days without a day off. And, oh, was he ever wore out. And, of course, he's still having his, you know, health issues, which, good Lord, that is just not helping matters at all. So, yeah, all I want for Christmas this year is for my husband to be healthy. Whew, from my mouth to Santa's ears. I really, really want that for him. I really need that for him. But he's been a trooper through it all. I mean, he, you know, goodness gracious, with all that he's going through um, and still making it to work 50 days in a row, God only knows how many hours in a week he would work. Because, of course, when he would get home, most nights was like 6.30 um, he's up at 3.30 in the morning, he gets home at 6.30 in the evening, and yeah, all the while feeling like crap, so yeah, poor guy, but he's my hero, he's been, he's been getting her done, you know what I mean, and when you've got chronic illness, that's what you got to do, you have to learn to live with it and do the best you can and that's what he's been doing so yeah and then I've been when was it um Monday I guess I had to go back to the doctor to get my thyroid results because I have little gremlins growing on my thyroid and uh, it makes it hard to swallow sometimes <laughs> but anyhow um yeah on top of you know the other issues I have so um, yeah, they're going to run some more tests and whatnot. Everything's fine with my thyroid, though. Um, the little gremlins have not grown since six months ago. So, I just, I go in in about a year to have another ultrasound done. And, um, that might be why my voice is kind of weird, too. I don't know. Anywho, yeah. I wouldn't mind some good health thrown my way as well, Santa, if you're listening. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, are all you looking forward to, all y'all, looking forward to the holiday season? Um, I am, and I'm not. I am, because I can't wait to, you know, give everyone their gifts. That's always fun. And um, and I can't wait for my husband to have time off. That will be super nice. I love it when he's home. Oh, 
I'm not looking forward to it because, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, you know, down here in Florida, it doesn't get cold for one thing, you know, obviously we don't have snow. So it doesn't really feel very Christmassy, you know, um, because of the weather, I guess. And, um, you know, it's, it's hard for me to get out and, um, stuff like that. So, you know, I don't really do Christmas shopping except online. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It just depends on how I feel, but yeah. So I don't know. I'm kind of in between, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, because my husband's going to be home and we're going to be able to go enjoy ourselves as a family together. Um, so that I am looking forward to. I hope you all are looking forward to your holiday season and I hope it's wonderful for you. Um, yeah. Awkward silence. <laughs> yeah, so anywho, I guess I've gone on long enough. I've yammered on long enough and I've almost finished two whole pages. Woohoo! So, I am going to probably stop here, stop rambling, and um, if I don't catch you before the holidays, I hope you all have a wonderful, blessed holiday, and enjoy family and friends, And just generally have a fun time doing whatever it is you do. And I think I'll leave y'all to it. Have a great day. Thanks.